This is a very strange world. Tangi creates strange, wonderful worlds. He was the epitome of a surrealist before surrealism and the movement even existed. He was an unusual guy. Now, he was born in Paris, but at a young age, his father passed away, and he moved to the seaside of Brittany. When he was in school as a young man, he met Pierre Matisse, the son of the painter Henri Matisse, uh, who, of course, later became a gallerist and was a fantastic supporter of Tanguy. He has no real formal training. So he doesn't come to art and to painting deciding to pre-compose, to draw sketches, to redraw them, to reconfigure figures. He just goes. When you look at Tangi, his shadows are inevitably this same nearly black gray. He would paint them first. This allows him the dexterity, the spontaneity to create shadow. Then he creates his forms and his figures based on those shadows. When he comes to America in 39, he's really mastered these much more biomorphic forms. But he comes to a new place with new materials, and all of these things are coming into his works. And that's exactly what we're seeing when we get to this. We've got those biomorphic forms. We don't know if they're animal exactly, and they seem to be made of sinew and bone and muscle. But they also seem to be made of new materials, of resins, in bright, strange, manufactured colors. We have this flat, large-lipped chartreuse table monster that seems to be down here in the corner. And notice it's striped plastic or Bakelite-like legs. He's using all of the new materials of this new world. And it's changing the palette as well. But he's still putting these elements into that sort of vaguely dreamlike version of Brittany. So we've got for instance, this strange red element. And as we look at it, we suddenly realize we can't place it in space. It is meant to be a dreamscape. It is meant to be another surreal world. We're not meant to take it literally. We're meant to be transported to another place, and that's exactly what Tongi is doing for us. Okay.